Hello there, my name is Rachel. The first time you see my channel, I used to review cartoon series, anime series, so something completely random. And today we're gonna talk about Arcadia Arc 3, the final three episodes. Yeah, I was sort of not sure where this show would go because it's one of those shows that it kind of completely kind of changed the rules. It's one of those that it really falls into the characters. You really trying to understand each character, their position, who they are, and how they act that way, that you can't really predict. Even you can actually see their expression, their emotion, their motivations, that sort of pressure they get getting the situation they get into, you can't really predict what they do, what was the right thing or the wrong thing. Even they think you do the right thing, that is the right thing, and that is sort of interesting watching this series because each character delivers each character you care about each character you don't want to die you just want to see them succeed what they're trying to do i think we should start with uh by and the detective then they got captured by the fireflies and detectives are freaking out by just so chill just relax we can deal with this so you find out who is the person who took them over the, the, the firefly gang now you realize who is the leader of the firefly gang it was Echo, that Echo I sort of forgot he was a, a character because he only showed up like I think in the first episode and that say he disappeared. You think it would be a throwaway character, but no. Echo came back. He came back as a man. His design was incredible. It's just like, whoa, he looks so goddamn badass. I just Love the design. He also love his motivation that he got sort of tired about Zuko, what he's doing with the everybody down below. He decided to sort of do a resistance, sort of trying to give people hope, trying to believe in themselves they could do better. And that is sort of relatable, likable type of character I did enjoy. And how he sort of kind of convinced by like things are changing, man. You can't stay in the past. You should keep moving forward, and especially what we're doing right now. I mean, I miss you, cool, yeah, but at the very end, you just stop what you're doing and fear, fear what's going on right in front of you. But a little bit that sort of trying to convince Echo, like, oh, you have the thing, the little crystal who actually uh, jinxed stole. Yes, I have it. And they try to convince him to go up the upside to convince the hard ups, like, yeah, this going on, we have the crystal, we can have peace. But every time they do something, something completely wrong like almost this close in the fact the most of the last final episodes it was just that just super close every single time but I love it it kind of kind of like explored even more like what happened to the bridge and jinx realized what a buy is doing and you just she loses her mind seeing her in the detective like she replaced me and she's trying to kill everyone explore the whole Bridge and you're killing herself just to make a point, and you feel for her when she actually dies. And Soko became he was really caring about Jinx. I mean, that's the surprise thing that like, you really don't know about Soko. He was using her or oh, truly caring about her. That sort of fine line you don't know which is which. But very end, I felt he was sort of lying to himself, like, yeah, I'm just using her, her skills, all that, I just eliminated her, but no, he truly cares, he went so many questionable things just for her, especially he's completely dead, that Zuko took her to the doctor, and doctor experimented her to make her uh, live through the incident, and made it more kind of a bigger monster before, because James become this sort of demon of death that sort of big bad monster you should not screw around that i whoa that was that was an unexpected not words but i truly love what happened to suko next that he sort of had a meeting with the other gangsters and the gangsters were starting to be unhappy especially when their higher ups are basically moving away from them they just close off everything they're losing money and they the gang leaders are just questioning Suku. and Suku showed them why he is the leader he basically screwed them over completely for just a few seconds to see them sort of squeal and that you show you why Suku is in charge but I love it more and more he trying to defend himself trying to prove himself no more the gang leaders stop caring they don't care anymore. You think he's weak. We should 
great rid of them. Especially that moment where Zuko sit down. You think that would be his end game. That's he. That's the point he was set of die. But no, because the very end, Zuko is a true gangster. Zuko believes on the trust of others, and that's the reason why he lived through the moment that he supposed to die. He didn't, and that's sort of impressive. I, I was so blown away, especially. What happened to him at the very end, how he dies, that like, god damn, when the character dies, you feel something, that means he was a true character. He was someone, someone you understood completely, especially when Zuko finally understood his best friend. The one who he killed in a couple episodes ago, ago he understood what he said, you had to make peace, you had to make compromise, he just sort of gets it now. I mean, a little bit too late, bro. I mean, you had done a lot of things, and now you about to die, but in the very end, he sort of understands, especially he went, when kind of made peace with uh, Ace, that he just wanted peace for everyone, but I love it that it was Ace first, and Zuko tried to manipulate Ace to get whatever he wants, but once more, Ace is, he's a genius, but he's not stupid. Like, bro, you know what this is. Stop pretending. Come on. And I love it that he just sort of admits he just sort of screwed up. Admits everything. But he won't admit because very end is sort of just being survived. Because it's the underground. The weak dies. The strong survives. Especially what happened to him and Jigs and by That sort of Destiny of Family Batman scene. That The scene that I'm talking about that Batman was sort of tied up and the Joker was the host entitled all the bad family certain something like their faces I bought the wait to see that in this series because you have Jinx doing the same thing as the Joker they have Zuko and uh, May tied up in a dinner scene surfing something you don't know what it is yeah I was like it's the detective's head or her face one of the two it has to be it has to be and she releases it it wasn't it was the stone i was like god damn jinx you all went crazy and she admits i i'm crazy but not that crazy yet and you love it it's that sort of scene sets up sort of an ultimatum that make her, uh, them choose zuko and may choose him choose her to become jinx once more or potter convince me you love it how Zuko pulls his heart. He's not like a smeagol. He is truthful to a uh, chinks that I do love you as a daughter. You understand me. We are survivors. In every single word he says to her is 100% true. Because very end, Zuko has nothing to lose. He know he's screwed. And that is a strong scene. Especially how... Uh, by trying to convince you're not that, you're part of, you're not Jinx. Remember what we used to be, but I love it how Jinx uh, kind of responds back that we can't be the same. She has changed, you have changed. You cannot be the same ever again because but, um, uh, by, she sort of lost in the past and she wants it back, but at the very end, you can't. Everyone has changed. You have to look forward now. And I love it that sort of detective was there also, that she was tied up and escaped and sort of makes her sort of a Mexican stand up, like trying to not to kill, but at the same time keep her honor, keep the respect, keep the peace. But in the end, Jinx is there and Jinx is unprotectable. And she did something that I thought I wasn't expecting. She shot uh, his father. I was, my mouth dropped, I'm like, she actually did it. She made the choice. She became Jinx. And she just flipped everyone and destroyed the council with a rocket. I was like, whoa, that was I was kind of surprised. I couldn't say the right words and I feel in that moment. It was sort of she did. She did what she wanted to do. She became kind of chaos. And that was sort of shocking, especially what happens to me. She's sort of realizing she did lost her sister, but she still has sort of hope. But at the same time, how you care someone who has no compass? And that's the problem. Like, 
what gonna happen next? I am now hope. I was hoping we get a season two to see what happened to the sisters, especially what happened to Ace, like his side of the story. He's struggling to make peace. His decisions. Ace want to be peaceful, but at the same time, they kind of push him to be deserved. Kind of be a dictator, a protector, but in the very end, he's none of them. He's a scientist. He believes of healing, not destruction. He's not a war hero or anything like that. You love it that he is not the perfect, perfect for the job, but at the same time, it's a person who needs the job. The person who can make peace. At the same time, it makes sense. He was chosen to be the sort of the bodyguard of the staff, the bodyguard of the whole city, but at the same time, he doesn't know what he's doing. Every decision he makes, it was sort of the wrong decision. And you felt like he was sort of strong, especially with his best friend, Victor, that he's sort of falling apart, making questionable experiments on himself, even accidentally killing one he assisted. That's something he doesn't really want to do. She just reappears and she accidentally killed her, trying to save him. And he just sort of realized he screwed up also. I love both of them because they kind of was kind of portrayed their own ideals to heal, save, change, and evolve the city, become one. In the very end, they both screwed up. They both compromised the ideals. And then stuff, they are completely relatable. You feel for them. You feel for everyone. Oh, I just want them to become better. But sometimes, you need to open communication, but I love it that even that's not really an option because if they do have peace, someone else feels they got cheated or they don't like the peace or you feel betrayed our ideals, but at the very end, you need to compromise and that's the problem, you can't. You have to like sit everybody around them to talk, but once more, if you do talk, someone die and it opens another chain of events. And that is so interesting about this series that you never know, can you have peace? And this is why I love this series, because it goes places. It really shows you the situation, each character, to see what they were and how they become right now. Now I'm just hoping they do have a season 2. I hope that they have a season 2. I don't know about you. Do you like this series? Do you hate it? Do you despise it? Enjoy it? Tell me down below, let me know. I really got nothing else to say. Just thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and have a wonderful day. Bye. <laughs>